Hello everyone, my name is Cece, and today I will be giving you guys a brief walkthrough on how to use the Gene Record Finder. So the Gene Record Finder is an online tool that allows us to quickly identify a unique set of axons for a given gene in the melanogaster. And to retrieve their coding DNA sequence, show for CDS, and they're also referred as to coding axons. You can access this tool from the, this web link up here and or you can simply um, access it via the genome browser page and that will be under the GEP tab and you'll find gene record finder which will lead you to this so for this demonstration i'll be using the putative order lock pp2a-29b as a example and you will enter your period of ortholog or gene in the search box. And the search box is case sensitive, so the gene symbol has to be entered exactly how it is shown from the melanogaster. And if we enter the gene symbol all lowercase, even if it has some capital letters, then it might correspond to another gene or we might get an error message. So we enter the demonstration gene with all its capital letters, lowercase letters, and the hyphen. So as I'm typing, you will notice that the search box will give you some suggested genes. And if you're seeing your gene symbol, then you know you have entered it correctly so far. And let's click the one that we want to look at. Now we're seeing an information for our demonstration gene. And under the gene details tab, you will find the overall information of the gene in the melanogaster. And the flybase ID is the proper ID of the gene. And if you need to search for a gene, you can use this as a unique identifier. And then it also tells you about the location and also the strand of the search gene in the current flybase assembly that we're using as our reference sequence. And then the Flybase GBrowse provide us a graphical or tabular representation of the gene sequence in the Drosophila melanogaster. And these features include such as genes and its um, isoform transcript, insertion, RNA-seq data, and also autologous um, regions in other Drosophila genomes and a wide array of other map features that can be selected and viewed along the genome coordinate scale. So for this specific gene, we can see that it's located on chromosome 2L on a positive strand with its given coordinates. And then if we click on the Flybase ID, it will redirect us to the Flybase website where we can further get more information about the um, function of this gene and other information as well. And then if we click on the GBrowse, we'll find other um, mapped features and other information in regards to this gene. And again, these information are given in Drosophila melanogaster, not in your target species. On the mRNA detail section, the DNA structure of PP2A29B illustrated in the melanogaster is shown five isoform and they're all going in the positive direction. What is an isoform? Gene isoforms are mRNAs that are produced from the same locus, but are different in their transcription star site, protein coding DNA sequence, and or untranslated regions, potentially altering the gene function. And based on this track, the isoform differ in the five prime um, untranslated region, and then also the terminal coding region along with its three prime untranslated regions. And if we click on the five base protein coding genes track containing the mRNA details, it will take us to the genome browser of the gene in the melanogaster. Let's click on that. And here we go. So this is a shortcut to allow us to view the gene in the melanogaster of the genome browser or if you want to take a look at them individually, you can click on each of their flyways unique identifier or its graphical 
viewer in GBrowse. Scrolling down to the CDS usage map section, we can observe again the five isoform and they have six identical coding axons location in common between axon one through six shown in the green box. And the difference between these isoforms lies within the last terminal axons in terms of protein sequence indicated by this polypeptide details tab. Now, the table, the last table is showing the details of the unique CDS protein sequence corresponding to each isoform. And if we select a different isoform, for example, isoform A, then, then the CDS table would display the corresponding CDS sequence of the isoform A. And again, all this information on this page and this table with axon information only deals with the coordinates in Drosophila melanogaster. And student annotators has to annotate it in their target species. Amino acid size includes stop code on here in this table, but in reality, that's not the case since a stop codon does not code for anything. Now this section is showing the polypeptide details and if you are going to annotate the untranslated region, you will be using the transcript details, which is here and looks like this. And for the purpose of gene annotation, we'll be using the polypeptide sequence. So to get a sequence of each particular axon, you will click on this, which you will get the sequence for CDS1. To get CDS sequences for the whole isoform, let's say in this case isoform A, then you will click on this and then, then you will get all the CDS sequence for this particular axon. And to get sequences of all axons, regardless of the isoform, then we'll click on export all unique CDS to FASTA, and then you will get them all in here. And you may find the CDS workbook useful when you're doing analysis, which is fine on the options right here. Click to download and save the Excel spreadsheet on your computer. And when you open the spreadsheet, you will see a template table for each isoform with its CDS um, ID identifier. And this table is useful to keep track of your annotation coordinates while determining the approximate location of the coding axons in your target species. So this, this template is optional to use to keep your predicted and or your final coordinates while annotating your gene. For example, I will use CDS1 as an example where I copy and paste the sequence and then I run the T plus N and this is the result. I took a screenshot and this is how I enter the predicted coordinates in this template where you have the start and end and also the orthodox strand. And then these coordinates that will reflect automatically from B and C. And this is what I have to share with you about the gene record finder. And let us know if you have any more questions. 